Hey folks, today we're going to show you how to frame a regular hip roof. Now in an earlier video, we showed you a basic gable roof. And if you're completely new to roof framing, you probably want to watch that video first. It'll give you a good perspective on the principles of pitch, run, and rise that you need to understand roof framing. Now there's a lot of overlap between framing a gable roof and a hip roof, and I'm not going to cover all of that again today. Hip roofs are not hard, but you do need to understand gables first. Okay, let's get started. On the model behind me, we're going to illustrate the framing of a hip roof. But to help us make this clear, we're going to use the drawings and examples from Roof Framers Bible. I wrote this book several years ago, and there's a lot of good info that will help us make this clear. However, the examples in the book are for a much larger structure than our model here. So we're going to use the model for visual illustration, but use the larger dimensions from the examples in the book. So what is a hip roof? It's a roof that slopes in all directions, like a pyramid. So to set the table to get started, let's take a look at this drawing. This drawing shows a hip roof. And as you recall, a hip is like a pyramid in that it slopes on all sides. Now on this particular roof, it's also a regular hip roof, which means that it has the same roof pitch on all of these sides. Now this drawing is showing the common rafters highlighted in blue. And on a regular hip roof, since it has the same pitch all the way around, these common rafters will all be the same length. So these here along the ridge and also this one on the end of the ridge will be exactly the same length. Now the common that hits on the end of the ridge is called a king common, but is exactly the same rafter, same cuts, same rafter length, everything. All right, uh, what else do we have here? We have valley rafters here in the bottom. We have hip rafters and we have jack rafters. Now you have hip jacks, which are rafters that run from the wall to the hip. Here we have a valley jack, which is a rafter that runs from the ridge to a valley. But most of the time we just call them jack rafters. We don't differentiate between them. Now one thing you want to understand about a regular hip roof is that these hips and valleys always run on a 45 degree angle in, in plan view. And you'll notice that the jack rafters are directly opposed to each other on each side of this hip rafter. And that's because these are exactly the same length. Since they have the same pitch here and here, it yields rafters of the same length. Now, they'll have opposite angles on them. You'll have a, a left jack and a right jack, but the rafters themselves overall have the same length. So that's one of the characteristics of a regular hip roof. Okay, here on this model, we've got common rafters on each side of the ridge. And we also have this one. So if we set it right here at the end of the ridge, this is called the king common. It's the common rafter that hits right on the end of the ridge. And this is exactly the same as the other commons. Same rafter length, same run, as we can see if we put it over here. So these rafters are interchangeable. All the commons are alike. So to see how that works, let's take a look at this drawing. All right, here we have a plan view drawing of a regular hip. And of course, plan view means that you're looking straight down on it from above. Now, what is a regular hip? It's a hip roof that has the same pitch all the way around. So we've got these four red arrows here that indicate that this roof is sloping down at an 812 pitch all the way around the roof. Now, when you have the same pitch, it's always going to result in the common rafters being the same length. Now, on this drawing, we have highlighted the principal common rafters in blue to make this clear. And as you remember, when we're doing a common rafter layout, we would always deduct one half of the ridge thickness from the common rafter run. And you can see over here that that's the case. This 12 foot 11 and a quarter has had the three quarters of an inch deducted for half the thickness of the ridge from this common rafter run. And you can see the run here is exactly the same as the run on this side. And that forms a square right here, just a straight square. And since the hip rafter runs on a diagonal across that square, it will always be on a 45 degree angle. And that's one of the key characteristics of a regular hip, that the hips and valleys will always run on a 45 degree angle. So you see the jack rafters that are shown on the front of this drawing, the ends of these will always be cut on a 45 degree miter. Now, another key characteristic is that the ridge length on a regular hip will always be equivalent to the length of the house minus the depth of the house plus the thickness of the ridge. And you say, well, why is that? Well, it's common sense, really, because the common rafter here and here 
form the depth of the house, and they're exactly the same as the length of the king common here and here. And of course, the adding the thickness of the ridge is adding back that three quarters of an inch that was deducted when we did our common rafter layout. So to recap, the key characteristics of a regular hip are that the common rafters will be the same length, the hips and valleys will run on a 45 degree angle, and the length of the ridge will always be equivalent to the length of the house minus the depth of the house plus the thickness of the ridge, which in our case here is six foot one and a half inches. Now I would note that the common rafter run here is indicated going to the end of the rafter tail. And I really would recommend that you get in the habit of doing that. And that's particularly true on an irregular or bastard hip roof because it'll help avoid a lot of confusion. So these common runs in this drawing are figured to the end of the overhang. And of course that tells us how far to pull back for the end of our ridge when we're doing our common and jack rafter layout. So the common runs are the same and the hip rafter will run from the wall corner right up to the ridge. And to show this clearly, let's take a look at this plan view drawing. Okay, here's an enlarged view of that same drawing. And we need to talk about hip pitch because it's different than the common rafters and we need to explain why. So on this drawing, we've got from the outside of the wall to the center of the hip, a common run of 12 inches. And it's the same on this side. And indeed on any equal pitch hip roof, they will be the same size. So it forms a little square. So here's an enlarged version of that square, and we can see that the common run runs 12 inches here and 12 inches this way. But the hip rafter has to run down here on a diagonal, and that's longer. So a square of 12 inches by 12 inches actually measures 16.97 inches on the diagonal. And we're going to round that to 17 inches. And so since that hip has to run a longer distance, as opposed to the common rafter, that's going to change the pitch of the hip rafter. And we'll explain a little better on the next drawing. Okay, we have that same drawing showing here with the common run of 12 inches and the hip run of 17 inches. And this drawing here will help clearly illustrate that. All right, so the, the common at 812 here is running 12 inches, run this way, and rising 8 inches. So that sets the ridge height. So the, the hip have to, has to match that. So it's, it's rising the same 8 inches, but it's doing it in a much longer length of 17 inches. So that clearly illustrates how this uh, hip pitch is a flatter pitch. It's an 817 as opposed to an 812 for the common rafter. Okay, we're here on the page for the 812 pitch roof. So to get our rafter lengths, we're going to go to run in feet. We're going to go down here to 12 feet. So our common rafter length is 173 and 1 8. So for our inches of run, which was 11 and a quarter, we'll go over on the opposite page, run in inches, and we'll go down to 11 and a quarter. And we see that that's a common length of 13 and a half. So if we add those two together from inches of run and feet of run, we get 186 and 5 eighths for a total common rafter length. So in same fashion for the hip rafter, we'll go to 12 feet of run and go across here. And then we'll go inches of run down here, all the way over here and get 17 and 5 eighths for inches of run. We add the two together and that will give us our total hip rafter length. Now, an alternative way is to use this factor chart right here. And we can simply take our common rafter run, which at 12 foot, 11 and a quarter inches, we convert it all to inches is 155 and a quarter inches. And we multiply that times 1.202 and it'll give us our common rafter length. In the same fashion, we can take our same 155 and a quarter of common rafter run times 1.563, and it will give us our hip valley rafter length. Now we also have all the other information we need. We've got first jack deduction and jack difference, both for 16 on center space jack rafters and 24 on center. We've got our hip pitch, hip drop, hip backing bevels, all of our cuts for square cut rafter tails, and also sheathing cuts. These are very helpful for cutting our roof decking uh, very quickly and accurately. So a lot of good information all right here on page 48 of Roof Ramer's Bible. Okay, we cut our common rafters and we set them. We've got the last common rafter here going right to the ridge and the king common going to the end of the ridge. And the hip rafter will run right across the corner of the wall 
right up there to the ridge. So you can see how the hip rafter is set, how these jack rafters are set. And we're going to show you how to, all the steps of cutting this hip rafter. But first I want to point out something. You know, on, on gable roofs, it's common to figure your rafter lengths from the hap or here at the outside of the wall. But there are a lot of good reasons that we should figure from the end of the overhang. Now, you know, this is especially true for bastard hip roofs because you've got different pitches, different plate heights. It's very much uh, in your interest to figure from the end of the rafter tail. But even on a regular hip, uh, it's good to get in the habit of doing so. Sometimes you may have brick veneer on, on one side of the house and not on the other. And it just makes it easier to figure from the end of the tail. You know, you've got a, a pyramid, basically. You've got a slope on this side and a slope on this side. And the base of the pyramid is this fascia point. That's the common line that goes around the building. So it's very advantageous to figure to the fascia point rather than the hap. Let's get in the habit of doing that. And that's the way these uh, illustrations are going to be given. Okay, let's lay out this hip rafter here. And it's an 817, so we want to lay our framing square on here like this. And we'll go an 8 here and a 17 over here. And that gives the plumb cut of our hip rafter. So we just want to mark that. And now all we need to do, we need to, to mark the double cheek cut. We need to, and here this is an inch and a half wide on the tongue of our square. We can just mark that. And that will give us two marks an inch and a half apart to cut our cheek cuts. We'll set our saw on a 45 degree angle and we'll cut it this way first and then this way afterward and that'll give us a double cheek cut. See, now you can see that that's got our double cheek cut right there. We're ready to go for our hip rafter. Okay, we've got our hip rafter here. We need to lay it out. So we just hook the end of the double cheek cut right on the end, pull down along the top of the rafter. And we'll pull all the way down to the end of the tail and make a mark. All right, we've marked our rafter length to the end of the hip tail. As you recall, we're going to figure all our rafter lengths from the end of the tail rather than the hap. So we're going to throw a frame square on here. And remember the hip pitch is an 817. So we're going to put an 8 here and a 17 over here and mark our plumb cut. This is the plumb cut on the end of our hip tail. And we need to bob off the bottom. You remember for the 1-6 fascia, we want 4 inches. So we're going to throw a frame square on here. Going to align it with our plumb cut. Come down 4 inches from the top of the rafter and mark it to bob off the end of our tail. All right, we figured our rafter length here to the end of the tail, and we need to put our bird's mouth on there, so we'll lay that back out from the end of the tail. So since we've got a common rafter run of 12 inches, and the hip runs on a 45 degree angle, that means the horizontal run of our hip rafter tail is gonna be 17 inches. So we simply place the framing square, 17 at the top edge of the rafter, eight at the top edge of the rafter, and we can mark our plumb cut, and that will be our hap and position of our bird's mouth. Okay, the next thing we gotta do is cut the bird's mouth for our hip rafter. Now, since this is a regular hip roof, and these rafters are gonna plane out across the wall, our actual hap is gonna be the same on the hip rafter as it is on the common rafter. So our hap from the top of rafter down, if we measure that, is four and a quarter inches. And we will have the same hap on the hip rafter. Now we need to mark the level cut of our hip rafter bird's mouth. Now, as you remember, our common rafter had a hap of four and a quarter inches. And since this hip rafter, being a regular hip, is going to run right across the corner of the wall, the hap on it will also be four and a quarter inches. So we flip, simply flip our framing square around here. And we'll align the square perfectly with this plumb line four and a quarter inches at the top edge of the rafter, and we can, we can mark the seat cut here. And now we've got the bird's mouth for our hip rafter.
Now we place that hip, and you notice the double cheek cut on the end of the tail. We place that hip, and it goes right up there to the top of the ridge. Here at the top of the hip, the center line of the hip, or the tip of the hip, is right here flush with the corner of the ridge. But you'll notice that it's not flush with the common. So you see where the shoulder of this hip is sticking up higher than the common rafter? So in order to get that to plane out, we would need to rip or back the top of this hip from here back to the center line of the hip so that it would plane out for our roof decking. Okay, since the shoulder of this hip is sticking up too high, we could rip a bevel here from 3 8 down back to the center of the hip with our backing angle on it. Or as an alternative, we could simply cut out right here along the seat cut of the bird's mouth the same 3 8 of an inch and just allow the entire rafter to drop straight down. And that would put this shoulder right down here at the line where we need it to for the jack rafters to plane out. So we can do it that way or we can back the hip, which we'll show you in just a second. Okay, let's take a look at hip rafter backing and cheek cuts. Now, as you recall, the hip and valley rafters will always be running on a 45 degree angle, that is for a regular pitch hip. And the center of that hip will be the intersecting point of the roof plane on one side and the roof plane on the other. So if we were to align this center line of the hip rafter right to the ridge, it would result in the shoulders of the hip, meaning this corner of the hip right here, of actually being too high. Because the jack rafter here is coming up, and remember it's going to uh, intersect with the center of the hip. And so this corner actually needs to be ripped off and show this bevel. So for on the 812 roof we're doing, that would be a 23 degree bevel that you would rip from the center line of the hip down. And that would cause the jack rafters to intersect with this line right here and uh, with the center line of the hip. Now, in reality, uh, you almost never do this. An alternative to ripping a hip backing bevel is to simply drop the hip. And so if uh, this shoulder right here is too high, you can simply cut the bird's mouth a little deeper and then just drop the entire hip down by the amount of the hip drop. And that would put this corner of the ridge, or the hip rather, right in line with the jack rafters and eliminate the need to rip these backing bevels. Okay, let's take a look at the cuts on the end of the hip rafter. Now, the end of this hip is going to jam up into the corner formed by the king common and the first common on the side. And so it, it would need to look like this. This is uh, looking straight down on the top of that end of the hip. And uh, the hip is an uh, inch and a half thick or wide. And so these are going to be cut on a 45 because we are dealing with a regular pitch hip. And so half of that distance would be three quarters of an inch. And that would be our cheek cut. We would cut a bevel on the end of this hip rafter, 45 on this side and a 45 on this side. So this number right here, if you pulled back on the horizontal, would be three quarters of an inch. So those are the cuts for a hip rafter, and we'll uh, go over the hip drop uh, a little more in another drawing. Here's another drawing of it. You'll see how the top edge of this hip rafter, if we were to bring the hip rafter to square on the top like this, and put it at the top of the ridge, it would be too high. The jack rafter running up here on this side of the hip, planing out with the center of the hip, would make these shoulders stick up high. So we could cut that 23 degree bevel on there if we wanted to, as shown in the earlier drawing, or we can simply drop the hip, and for this 812 pitch, it'd be 3 eighths of an inch. We could drop it down, so now the hip rafter is here, and so the jack rafter is playing out nicely with the corners of the hip. And you can see that over here. We we laid out this hip rafter, and of course you can see on the framing square how you mark that as an 817 to get a level cut and a plumb cut for the hip rafter. And you would lay this out just like you would the common rafter. And this uh, seat cut height here, or as some people call it, the hap, which is height above plate, that is going to be the same as the common rafter on each side, not including the hip drop. And that, of course that would be to the center of this hip. So to overcome the problem with the shoulders of the hip being too high right here, we simply take the same 3 8 inch hip drop and we cut the top of this bird's mouth just a little bit deeper. And that allows this entire hip rafter just to drop straight down. And that brings the corner of the hip right down in line. 
And so the decking would still run up here and peek out, but the top of the hip would be right here. And so that shows you very clearly how you do the hip drop. You see how the tip of the hip is dropped down. And now these shoulders here on each side are flush with the commons. So by cutting three eighths of an inch out of our seat cut of the bird's mouth, we simply drop the rafter down and now these shoulders are fine. And this is done in lieu of backing the rafter. Okay, now we've backed the hip rafter. So you see how the shoulders are now beveled down. So the tip of the hip is right at the ridge. And then each side is right down flush with the common rafters. See how that planes out in that backing angle? Just right so the decking will plane across the hip. The next step is to get our jack rafter lengths. And we'll show that clearly in this next drawing. Okay, let's talk about how we get jack rafter lengths. Now we're showing here figures 12 and 13 of Roof Framer's Bible, and that's pages 18 and 19, and it's showing how to get our various jack rafter lengths. So if we begin here with our common rafter, and we've already calculated that length, and it's 186 and 5 eighths. So we begin with this common rafter, and it's square on the end. So to get the long point of our first jack, for this 812 roof, we want to deduct 18 and 3 quarters of an inch. And that puts us down here at the long point of the first jack. Now, if we want to get to the second jack, we're going to deduct the jack difference, which is 19 and a quarter inches. And that will put us down here at the long point of the second jack. Now, I want to point out that this is not a run number. This is an actual rafter length number that's measured along the top of this jack rafter. So we would continue to use this jack difference to get all of the jack rafter lengths as we go down the hip. Now you say, well, why is the first jack deduction different than the jack difference? And the reason is this. If you projected a line along the edge of this hip rafter straight up here, you would notice that it does not intersect the corner of that common. Because the common rafter is square, it's not going to be the same as it is from jack to jack. Okay, here's a close-up view to illustrate why the first jack deduction is different than the jack difference. Now, as you can see here, the center of this hip is always going to run right up here to the corner of the ridge. But the side of the hip right here, if we projected a line up here, you see that it's not intersecting uh, with the common. So, since we're going from the square-ended common, it's going to be a different deduction to get to the first jack than if we were going to this point up here. So Roof Ramer's Bible will give you that first jack deduction and that goes from the actual common rafter length here down to your first jack. And then for all the rest of the jacks you'll use the jack difference to, to get all of their lengths. Now people don't realize it but they're using Construction Master and they're typically they're putting their common run here to the side of the ridge and so Construction Master is giving them the correct length for this common rafter. However, when they then hit the jack key, it's giving them a value that is not the correct length of the first jack. Since the Construction Master is actually doing it on the standard jack difference as if it were going to this point up here. And so since their first jack is the wrong length and all the rest of their jacks are based off of that, that means all their jacks are the wrong length. And so people doing it all the time and don't even realize it. Of course, you know, it does affect things. The jacks are running out of square because they're the wrong length. And uh, it can affect the uh, breaking of your decking. Your little rafter tails, especially down on your short jacks, will be skewed out of square. And um, so they're fighting that and they don't realize the origin of it is the way that Construction Master gives a jack uh, calculation. But since Roof Ramer's Bible makes allowance for that and gives you the first jack deduction from the square common and then a jack difference from all the rest of them, they fit beautifully. It's just amazing how well everything works out when you've got the true and correct lengths for everything. Okay, let's get our uh, jack rafter lengths. So here we are on page 48 of Roof Ramer's Bible and it's got all the information we need to get our jack rafter lengths, both for 16 inch on center rafters and for 24 inch on center. So to get our first jack, we want to use the first jack deduction. So coming from the square ended common rafter, we wanted to subtract 18 and three quarter inches, and that will give us the long point 
of the first jack rafter. And that's the significance of this LP shown here. Now for the rest of the jacks, we're going to subtract 19.23 inches for each jack. And rounded to the nearest eighth, that's 19 and a quarter inches. Now if you've got a long hip and a big string of jack rafters, you always want to use this decimal number because use of the rounded number would result in a cumulative error by the time you got down through a long string of jacks. Now we got the same thing for the 24 inch on center. We would deduct for our first jack deduction 28 and 3 eighths. And then for the jack difference from there on, we'd use 28.84 inches. Now also the Roof Framers Bible will give you a jack rafter length per inch of layout. And we'll show you how to use that in a minute, but this is very useful for when you need to make changes to the layout of your jack rafters. You can quickly alter the jack rafter length to account for moving it along the layout. And we'll show you that in a bit. Okay, let's look at the other end of the ridge. You know, it's common practice for framers to put two commons flush with the end of the ridge on this end, and then to do the same on this end of the ridge. So if our dotted line here is showing uh, commons set that way, then the uh, difference from the common rafter down to the first jack would be exactly the same as the first end of the ridge here. And we see that's 167 and 7 eighths for our first jack. And that matches the first jack on this side. Now, one of the advantages of putting common rafters flush with the end is that it give us, gives us matched sets of jacks. So the jacks on this side will be exactly the same as the jacks over here. Now, the downside of that is that you're breaking the 16 on center layout as you come across when you cross the end of the ridge. And of course, when you're decking the roof, if you take an eight foot sheet and you start out uh, in the center of one of these rafters, they're not gonna break on the rafters on this end of the ridge. So that's a problem and some of you don't wanna do that. So if you wanna keep your commons 16 on center all the way across, you can easily do that. Now, if you did that in our example here, this last common rafter would be six inches back from the end of the ridge. So we've got to adjust the jack rafter length that would have been here that is now here. Now, Roof Framers Bible gives us a calculation of 1.202 inches per inch of layout. Now, this is for the 812 roof. It would give that calculation for all the different pitches. So we simply take this six inches and we multiply it times the 1.202 inches. And it tells us that this jack rafter is going to get longer by seven and a quarter inches. That's to move it to its new position uh, to be on center layout with this other one. So now we have a first jack dimension on this side of 175 and an eighth. Now to get from it down to the second jack on this side, we simply do the same jack difference deduction of 19 and a quarter. And that gives us our second jack length. And we'll continue to make that same jack difference deduction all the way down the hip until we've got all of our jack rafters. So that's a quick and easy way to get all of our jack rafter lengths, uh, regardless if we're keeping commons flush with the end of the ridge or if we're maintaining our 16 on center layout across the entire roof. Okay, now we got our common rafter over here. We need to lay out our jacks. So butting it, we're going to mark 16 and 32 for our 16 on center jack rafters and we're ready to set our jacks. Okay, the jacks are all set. You can see the eaves line up beautifully. The overhangs all perfectly aligned. And as you come pan around here, you can see that the jack rafters are opposing straight up the hip. So they look really nice. Okay, we're ready to deck this roof. And if we're gonna put a full sheet on here, we need to know what angle to cut on it where it runs up along this hip rafter. Now, normally you would be dependent on somebody up on the house to give you those dimensions, but Roof Ramer's Bible makes this really easy. We know exactly what those angles are gonna be. You know, if we had a common rafter and we could pull either a long point or a short point, we can quickly get the correct angle. Or if we've got a roof that has a hip running down here, and it turns the corner and very quickly breaks up a valley rafter, we don't have a square corner to pull from. But no worries, because Roof Framers Bible tells us exactly what those angles are. So we've got a couple drawings in Roof Framers Bible that's gonna show you 
exactly how it gives us all of the needed dimensions and angles to cut this roof sheathing. Okay, let's talk about sheathing cuts. We've been looking at an 812 hip roof and we're ready to put the sheathing on the roof. So if we come up here and uh, this sheet is coming over to this hip rafter, we have to know what this angle is to cut our sheathing to fit the line of the hip rafter. Now we could get the guy up on the roof to give us a uh, short point and then a long point dimension and we can use it to cut this angle. The problem is, uh, what is he pulling from? He may be pulling from a common rafter that's got a, a bow in it or whatever. And so he could be giving us an incorrect dimension. So the nice thing with Roof Framer's Bible, it's got all of these angles for sheathing cuts all pre-calculated for all the various roof pitches. So if the guy on the roof will give you either a short point dimension or a long point dimension, you can down on your sawhorses, you can throw a four bait sheet up on there and you pull over from your long point uh, 39 and 7 eighths and that will give you this exact angle to fit the hip rafter. Now what if you're in a tight corner let's say a roof comes around from a hip and then it's, it shortly turns the corner it's straight into a valley and you don't have any square corners to pull off of. Well in that case we also have it as a framing square uh, cut dimension so if you throw a framing square up on there nine and seven eighths over here on the tongue and 12 inches on the body of the square and it will give you that exact same angle. So regardless of whether we've got a big sheet or a small piece by either of these methods we can get an exact angle for this hip sheathing. Now of course that uh, presumes that your hip is all in the correct location and everything but uh, if you've done your job well and your common and hips are properly placed you can use this to cut your sheathing and it'll fit like a glove. It'll just go right exactly down the hip line and it'll all be uh, very accurate. Okay, that finishes our video on regular pitch hip roofs. Now, it wasn't so hard, was it? If you take it piece by piece, and if you found it helpful today, please hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any of our future videos. And the next time, we're going to show you how to build a irregular pitch hip roof. Some people call those bastard roofs. Now those are a whole lot more complicated, but with Roof Framers Bible, you can master those as well. So thanks for watching today and keep on framing.